17 years ago yesterday, June 5th, Metallica released into the world what was possibly their most infamous and divisive album ever, Saint Anger. It's really strange to think that this album is nearly 20 years old now. It seems like yesterday that it was just released. Back in the summer of 2003 when this first dropped, I was just starting to play guitar and this was my first real experience of Metallica. And I loved it. I loved everything about it. The artwork, the riffs, everything. I was 13 years old and I remember spending the summer at my grandparents' house playing guitar all day and watching the St. Anger music video on Kerrang! TV. They just used to play it over and over again back then along with Tenacious D, Papa Roach, Linkin Park. Oh, nostalgia. So it was kind of a shock to me to learn as I got older that this wasn't such a great album and in fact it was considered one of the worst because I genuinely loved this at the time. I wasn't alone either. Metal Hammer gave it 9 out of 10 and I think Total Guitar Magazine, which I read constantly back then, gave it top whack as well, 5 out of 5 stars. So I thought I'd ask you guys Guys, why is this album so hated now? And as it turns out, contrary to popular opinion, loads of you like Sent Anger. Way, way more people than I expected. Of course, many of you hate it as well. One thing you all agreed on though is that the snare drum sounds like sh Yep, the snare drum that spawned a thousand memes. The snare drum on this album is so famous that if you Google Sent Anger, one of the first autofill options is Sent Anger Snare. It sounds like a frying pan or a rubbish bin trash can. Something like that. Another thing you guys mentioned was the production and basically how you all hated it. For what it's worth, the production on this album never really bothered me. It wouldn't be the first or even last Metallica album with questionable production choices, would it? So yeah, it might be a controversial opinion, but I think this album is pretty well mixed, even with the snare. Bringing it back to guitar for a bit, it's kind of clear that they wanted to do something different. Most of St. Anger is in drop C tuning, which is much lower than usual for Metallica. It doesn't stop there either. Tunings on this album include drop C, drop C sharp, double drop C on a seven string, and the song Invisible Kid actually has two tunings. Drop A flat on a baritone guitar, which actually looks really cool. And Kirk's guitar is in this strange tuning, which I don't actually think has a name. Another thing is, is there's no guitar solos at all. I'm not really sure why they chose to do this. It was around that time of new metal where guitar solos just weren't really that cool. So perhaps it's that. Whatever you think of the album as a whole though, it's definitely got some cool riffs. I mean, it is Metallica. Cool riffs is kind of what they do, right? And I still think there's a whole bunch of things to like and appreciate about St. Anger, even if the songs or the production themselves aren't the best. So I've put together sort of a medley of what I consider some of the best riffs from Metallica's worst album. Remember to drop a like, subscribe, and tell me in the comments below what you think about St. Anger. Oh, and don't worry, I've replaced the snare drum with a regular one.
what are your thoughts on St. Anger? For me, I quite like it, even all these years later. Although, as my ear and music taste have evolved over the years, I can tell it's not the best. I'm not sure all the songs and the album as a whole really works together. It's kind of rough around the edges, but I think that's probably exactly what they were going for. But it's got a lot of cool riffs, it's got a lot of energy, and I think it was a very important and cathartic album for Metallica to make, given the struggles they've been having at the time. I didn't really talk about lyrics in this video because well, guitar. But lyrically, there's a lot to take in, with themes covering addiction, the whole Napster thing, and anger, obviously. Speaking of Napster, this video is sponsored by DistroKid. DistroKid can help you get your music online and in digital stores like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, and yes, even Napster. I've been using DistroKid for years to get my music online. It's always super fast and zero hassle. You just upload your music and artwork to your account, select which stores and services you want to distribute it to, and you're done. DistroKid will take care of the rest. You keep all of your sales and streaming revenue, and it's super fast too. I've had my music in stores the same day sometimes. That's crazy fast. New DistroKid features can help you get your collaborators paid with automatic revenue splits, and get you a verified Spotify for Artists page, helping you keep track of stats and pitch to those all important playlists. You can also use their new hyper follow feature to get more Spotify followers and you can now upload synced lyrics for Instagram. Thank you DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Use the special link below to save 7% when you sign up and start getting your music heard. Happy birthday St. Anger, you're not so bad after all. As usual you can subscribe up there if you want to see more of my videos, hit that and turn on notifications. Also consider checking out my Patreon to get tabs and extras for this and all my videos. Thank you so much for watching and until next time my name is Pete and I play music.